Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day. This man that looks extremely happy is Graham Day. <laughs> and there's me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'll read. Uh, uh, first things first, let me get it straight out first. Can you all hear me? Uh, if someone's in the chat, please let me know. Uh, because yesterday's stream, Kangorilla Dog, Mr. Alpe, talked me into che uh, checking out RTX Voice after the PUBG stream yesterday. Long story short, I have this, which you can almost see the edge of. I think you see the bottom of it there. That's one of those standing desk fans. I have that there. But today behind me, I have that there because it is ridiculously warm. Um, mm -hmm. So I had fans in the room yesterday. We had uh, people outside screaming yesterday. I had a lawnmower as well. It was just like background noise at central. <laughs> what, Jim were there? <laughs> yeah, Jim. God, Jim, honestly. It's off-season. He needs to do something to keep him busy. He's waiting for the uh, <laughs> premierships. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have RTX voice switched on so hopefully it sounds good hopefully you don't have the background stuff I may sound a bit more robotic at times when we have like the sulfur sirens and stuff in the background going past just because it's RTX voice it's it's obviously um, digital encoding mm. voiceness so if it sounds a bit dodged that's what it is but as long as it sounds good as long as the background noise has dropped overall we should get more benefits from the rtx voice on now i've actually spent the time to get it configured properly if it's working if it's not let me know uh david said yes so i'm assuming that's good that's good nice nice mr t yay tassim anvia noted industry leaker in the chat with an emote that sounds a little bit like this hello <laughs> a little bit but not much just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that's just come from. I know where it came from. That's fucking Castolo from Zafaka uh, Zafaka Extreme. <laughs> it, it might have been. A fucking, I mean, at least I got there eventually. Zafa Cakes. I said Zafa Cakes or something like But yeah. Anyway, good morning, Liz. Anyone that's here on a Friday morning, good morning. Thank you for spending your time here on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause. My name is Graham. This is Bib. Together we are Ice Cream, and in true Ice Creamy fashion, this is The Scoop, your daily dose of news from the world of video games and beyond. And some may say it, this is the UK's number one video games podcast. We say it, we're the ones that say it, but just, you know, some some do say it. because yeah. anyway, anyway, I've mentioned, obviously, my name's No one's this. ever challenged, challenged us on that, have they? So, as, I mean, far, as far as we're aware, it's still the case. The, the, the best thing was, uh, when we were at the Twitch Christmas Mixer, uh, which still baffles me that Twitch's party was called Mixer. <laughs> Mixer doesn't even exist as of next month, but Twitch's called their parties Mixer's what? Uh, uh, RTX is on. What about chatbot? Yes, that is on. Look at me. Don't look at Bib. Look at me. Look at me. This is fine. Um, yeah, we were at the Twitch Twitch Christmas party. We won't call it Mixer. We were at the Twitch Christmas party. Me, Bib, uh, a bunch of other UK partners and stuff. And we were talking around. And people were like, so what? So, so. What is it you guys do? Some of you people are, we, we, we uh, do the scoop. And Bibs jumped straight in with a UK's number one video game podcast. And they were all like, oh, obviously. And you saw the face light up like, wow. And we were like, well, well, we say that. <laughs> no, no we, we say that. But yes, 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 it is. It's yeah. just a ma matter of opinion. <laughs> That's it. We talk a good game. And who else is there to, out there to challenge us? So, balls to them. <laughs> If, as far as we're concerned, and the you guys in the chat, it's the UK's premium number one video game podcast. So you goddamn right, goddamn right. I mean, if if you can have the official energy drink of esports, which I think is G Fuel or something like that, then if they can be the official energy drink of something that's subjective, then then we can be the number one video games podcast from the UK. So there you go, there you go. I mean, we're not saying number one in what the number one in being. <laughs> In the number one in being video games podcasts called The Scoop, hosted by me and Bib. Yes, absolutely <laughs> smash that bad boy. Anyway, what is The Scoop, I hear you ask? I mean, apart from being the number one video games podcast from the UK, we give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories from the world of video games. And we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions so we can have a backwards and forwards. And it's important that you do that because we turn this into a YouTube video and an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Everyone watching On Demand gets the benefit of on demand things, but they don't get to speak to us right in the chat. They don't get to pull apart the articles that we're running through. So make sure you use the opportunity, if you are live on Twitch, to do that for everyone else. Just like Madge has done. Good morning, Madge. Uh, Hi, Madge. Uh, because, you know, I wasn't quite convinced of the Castolo-isms before. But what does that emote sound like just there? <laughs> Hello. 
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Just, ne- next next time we're playing Pez. Uh, Castolo scores like a 40, uh, 40 yard scream straight into the top bins. I, I want to hear screams from the audience. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, fish. Morning, fish. Good morning, fish. Uh, Matt says, hopefully, some news to raise a smile this morning. But well, we have quite a bit of news. We will try to be concise so we can get into the league on time at 12 noon. Uh, so let's just jump straight in. Let's just jump straight in. This one, I actually, I'm, I'm counting you guys to give us a lot of your thoughts on this because I didn't see any of this last night. Um, I chose to not, to, well, those of you who have seen our tweets, our first story is based on Cyberpunk. I'll bit my tongue. Um, and I didn't watch any of it. I didn't watch any of the reveal. I didn't watch Night City Wire. Excuse me. Because I was... Basically, full on into the last dance. I've got two episodes left and I wanted to uh, plow through it. So I didn't see any of this. So I'm coming into this completely blind. I watched the trailer this morning and that's it. Not, nothing else. So let's, let's jump in. Let's jump in. First news of the day. Uh, the new Cyberpunk 2077 trailer shows prologue missions and key characters written by Austin Wood for Games Radar. Uh, the tagline says, from humble, extremely dangerous beginnings. So the new Cyberpunk 2077 trailer revealed uh, today's Night City Wire event gave us a fairly in-depth look at the game's prologue, in- including some key characters and intro quests. Properly titled uh, The Gig, the trailer opens with a meeting between protagonist V, is it V? I'm assuming it's V, uh, and Jackie Wells, our partner in underground dealings. Jackie recruits V for a new heist targeting Arasaka, one of the most powerful corporations in Night City. Arasaka's got a biochip which through digitization, can grant virtual immortality. And naturally, everyone wants it, which is where you come in. In the early stages of the game, you'll team up with Jackie and his crew, including Dexter Deshawn, a kingpin featured in previous trailers, to infiltrate Arasaka and neighbor the chip. From the looks of it, things quickly wind up pear-shaped, and the once quiet heist turns into a bloody shootout. V gets away, but he's betrayed by Dexter, and that seems to be where the prologue ends and the main game begins. As always... There's a ton, uh, there are tons of small but important details and shots buried in almost every scene. We get another look at the Badlands surrounding the nice city, where it introduced several corporate antagonists, including an all cyborg villain named Adam Smasher. What a name. Uh, and what looks to be a laser wielding boss pops up around 1 minute 20. And again, most of this is all coming in the opening game. It wouldn't be a Cyberpunk 2077 trailer without an appearance of Keanu Reeves' character, Johnny Silverhand. And Johnny does get a small part after V is betrayed. He's got one word of dialogue in this trailer, and it's exactly what you'd expect. Fuck. Uh, take an early look at the Cyberpunk 2077 map while you're upon your journey as V. Uh, so there we go. Thank you for the ice cream. Lads, thank you very much for the host this morning. Good morning. Welcome in. Welcome in. We are... Well, let me check this. What's we? Discussing the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer. Uh, do you know what? I'll actually jump back onto the article and I'll hit play on the trailer whilst whilst Bib gives his thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to stay away from most of these oh. things um, purely because I want to go into it. I want to experience it all for the first time. Um, I, this morning, trying to find some information on this, there were, yesterday was the day that most people could drop their thoughts and their first up to five hours, I think, of gameplay. So it's every man and his dog on the internet talking about this. So it's quite hard to stay away from it uh, without actually blocking key words. What the hell with that? Oh, okay. <laughs> For those of you that are wondering, Graham just blew his nose. and it, Yeah. That did not sound like he was blowing his nose. R- RTX effect on the nose blowing. <laughs> it, it literally just sounded like his ass fell out. But yeah. um, <laughs> the, the trailer looks boss. It, the graphics look amazing. If If this is what... They meant by taking their time with it and having to delay it twice. It looks brilliant. Um, trying to find articles this morning where I could just find information about the game and not opinion pieces was quite difficult. Um, the opinion pieces, as you can imagine, from being able to play it for five hours compared to a video that they can show stuff, um, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes worth of content. People can write that down and it'll be paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. And obviously we don't want to be sat here for half an hour reading someone's opinion out for you because believe it or not people have more than one opinion so everyone's will be will be completely different so yeah this is this is what i could find this morning where we could just give you a little insight into what the game's about uh what the trailer shows <clears throat> and everything else about it but i mean this just this just if anything enforces the hype level that's going to be around this game it looks amazing excuse me um r- running back through the chat i mean 
Let's get this one out of the way first. Ad says, Master of the League returning today. You're goddamn right, it is 12 ish. We will be on straight on after the scoop, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Asim says, loved it. Well hosted and put together game update. Obviously, the game looks incredible, but good news uh, that there will be PS5 and Xbox Series X updates when it launches on them. Uh, Madge says, if it runs like uh, butter on PS5, then take my money, Sony. Uh, Ad says, wish I could afford a PS5. You, you never know how much it is yet. I mean, uh, Madge, music to my ears. Yeah, they said they'll announce what they are soon. Uh, the way they did these worldwide previews given COVID was interesting. They used Parsec. They used Parsec? Hey, they've clearly been watching Masters of the League. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you know what? This game looks incredible. It absolutely does. I mean, the only thing I will take away, and maybe I'd, I need to go sit down and... Uh, well, the only negative I would throw in, and maybe I need to sit down and, and look at it properly, is without reading any of the context, and whilst working trying to get everything ready this morning, uh, um, I watched that trailer, and it was a bit like... It was a bit too much. I couldn't take it in. But that is, it's very, very likely that I was just rushing and wasn't giving it the attention that it deserved. Um, but yeah, it, it seemed like there was a lot going on in the trailer. Maybe maybe too much, but like I say, that could be on me. However, if I slow that down and take that uh, scene by scene, just everything about it looks amazing. Even this, literally where I've just... Uh, like Actually, that might be the thumbnail, but that... Look at the facial detail of that character on the screen there. See. So the characters look amazing. The environments look amazing. The animations look amazing. Yes, I know it's only a trailer and it's all gone up. But, oh, it's got falling down the sky. Uh, um, but yeah, it, everything about it looks looks class. Um, I my only worry, and that's not nothing shown from this, is just because maybe obviously mentioned the uh, the two. Uh, is it two or is it three delays? Whatever we've had now. Um, uh, I think we've had two for two so far. Uh, so my only worry this, is that this one was a lengthy one, wasn't it? This was months rather than like weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, my only worry is that it's when you have those sort of delays. Is it just to make sure that every bug is eradicated and it's and it's absolutely uh, class, or is it that there were so many bugs that they had to like squash them all? But if there are that many, then you mm. can miss some. Um, I, I mean. I, because it's CD project, I think it's probably the former. Uh, the former. They just want to make it pristine. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's always the danger that it could be the, the latter. There was that many that they needed to to squash it in. And if it's such such a vast game, such a uh, game that will heavily use the uh, the next gen technology, maybe it was a case of current gen technology that is that's where all the bugs were. And and is it going to mm. stack up kind of thing? But but I mean that's just. Uh, conspiracy theory, I suppose, from my side of things. Not, nothing suggests that is the case, other than like assumption. So I'll give them the uh, yeah. benefit of the doubt on that. Well, the way the way that I see it on this is they have given the they've given people the option to be able to come in and play the game. They've done a play test, and the people who have been play testing <clears> this, I don't know whether I, I imagine with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, they wouldn't have been able to go into. Uh, I don't know, flying them into CG Project Red, and they'd be in a in a room where only the people who are playtesting have gone in and seen it. Um, people have just given feedback there and then, or a week later, or something like that. And they've taken the feedback and gone, "Shit, this is actually quite a lot of feedback." Uh, there's some bl- bugs, playtest. There's something doesn't work right there. It's it's slowing down in certain areas, and they've taken that and then decided, you know what, we ain't going to get all this done before the release date, the initial release date. So we're going to have to push this back. And that's fair play to them. The thing that worries me is if they've only been able to play for five hours and found that many bugs and they've had to push it back, what does the rest of the game look like? Hmm. Do you know what? Well, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's give them the Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, if but... they, they've obviously taken that into consideration because five hours worth of bugs obviously will take X amount of time for them to be able to fix. If the game's 50 hours, that's why they've pushed it back so long. So they've given themselves another, what, four, five months ish to be able to get it sorted out. So the benefit of the doubt is well and truly in theirs. They've decided that if there is that much that needs doing, we'll just take as much time as we need. And giving yourself five months is a hell of a long time in video game development when you've already when you've already technically completed the game. Just put tra- <coughs> trailer back on screen for those that haven't seen it again. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, not only that, I mean, they could just be pushing it back, obviously. Uh pushing it back gets them closer to the next console uh, launch. So there's there's all sorts of uh, rumours and assumptions that part of it was that they pushed it back to get to that level. 
uh, of, do you know what? We can get it now and you can get it next gen and they're all kind of alongside. Do you know what? You, oh, absolute, uh, where is it? There you go. Spunky monkey. I well, I saw that and I thought that said spike zombie monkey in my head. Like literally for just a second, I caught it out the bottom of my eye, but it doesn't. So it's not, it's not spike. Never mind. Carry on. Um, but yeah. Where was it? There was a comment in the chat. Uh, Madge says, Cyberpunk is a very overblown visceral style, so try not to let it overwhelm you, great. Yeah, 100%. It kind of um, it kind of ticks kind of like a few design styles for me. Asim said uh, Blade Runner. So best thing, uh, and it's a CPR thing, uh, CD Projekt Red thing, is that the world is very much lived in and feels like immersive and more. As a Blade Runner slash sci-fi fan, uh, I needs it. See, I kind of, I see... Uh, obviously, the Blade Runner elements, naturally. Um, but then there's kind of like uh, a bit of Minority Report, potentially a bit of Altered Carbon, particularly the first. If anyone saw the first season of Altered Carbon, it kind of feels a bit like that. Um, and none of that is bad thing. It's it's that over-the-top sort of futuristic marketing in-your-face uh, element and it yeah it just looks class but the gameplay and it, everything about it just looks really good and looking, I'm, I'm watching it again definitely definitely a lot in this trailer in terms of they have uh it's probably with that visceral sort of styling gone for the idea of showing you a bit of everything you've got narrative you've got characters you've got gunplay you've got action scenes you've got motor racing scenes you've got uh all of that Big, quick, fast action cuts in a, in a trailer that's like a minute and forty seconds when you take off all of the uh, the bumper stuff as well. So mm. definitely a lot in there. Plus, obviously, this Keanu Reeves. Uh, let's unmute. Fuck. There we go. Just in time. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the one word that Keanu Reeves says. I would play it all, but I don't know about DMCA and stuff. So let's just we'll just keep the audio. Um, uh, one thing that I wish I'd have done though is actually played the board game. Because I watched the PlayStation Access guys maybe 18 months ago. It might even be two years ago now. It feels like a lifetime ago. Or the the, the whole timeline of the world had just seemed to stop uh, and just merge into one <clears throat> at this moment in time. But I remember watching them play it and it looked amazing. It looked so badass. I just loved it. I, lo I mean, I love board games anyway. I'm a, I'm a proper nerd like that. I haven't played Dungeons & Dragons. I've always wanted to play it, but I've had no one to play with. I'm that lonely Stay kid frosty. that has never been able to. Do Chucky again! Get your money in your pocket, son. <laughs> <laughs> what? I appreciate that, mate. Iceman, enjoy the gift of sub if you are here. Uh, if you're not, then enjoy it anyway. The next time you get here. Oh, yes. What a guy, Chucky. Good morning, you absolute hero. He is a hero. <clears throat> Love you, uh, mate. What? Sorry, what, what were you saying then? I was on the train of thought and I've kind of lost it now because Chucky just come yeah. in, derailed the, the train. <laughs> <laughs> we set the train off. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be able to play the the cyberpunk board game. I don't know. The only person I think in here, in fact, there's two people. I imagine Madge and Asim may have come across it before. That they would have either they look like board game people that they would sit down and play a game like that. So I don't know whether or not either of those two people would have played it, but it looks amazing. Speaking of PS access, uh, I didn't once again. I didn't see it. I only saw it because obviously I follow on Twitter. But it was nice to see. Holly Bennett mentioning that she was back at the front of uh, delivering video content. Obviously, a big thing, of big part of, I mean, huge part of PS Access. Um, but seeing that she was back leading the content, it's good for me to see. Absolutely. Excuse me. Um, my morning granola is, is wanting to say hello. Good morning. Uh, never played it, but yes, it does look amazing. Cyberpunk RPG system back in school uh, was very cool. So, so. When you say in the board game, I mean, I know there's been like a renewed, like a recent board game, but was this an older thing as well? I'm not sure. I don't know the actual age of the board game. I don't know whether or not it could. It might have been like 10 years. And that's just me completely guessing hypothetically. It could have been like 10 years old. It could have been 30 years old. And that's what it's been based off. I have no idea. I'm going to have a look now. Um, but I only realized that it was a board game when the PlayStation Access guy started playing it. Cyberpunk board game. Let's see. Let's, let's have a look at the date of this sucker. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Cyberpunk is a dystopian tabletop role-playing game written by Mike Pondsmith and published uh, by Talstorian Games. Introduced 1988. <laughs> wow. I, see, I didn't know any of that sort of stuff. I mean, I knew that there was some history to it, but I didn't realize it went back to, like, when I was still in nappies. 
That was last week, yeah. by the way. Um, <laughs> well, that was the first edition. Since then, they've had Cyberpunk 2020 in 1990. And then in 2005, they released Cyberpunk uh, version 3.0. And then there's meant to be another board game coming next uh, this year, 2020 expected Cyberpunk Red, it's going to be called. So there's technically going to be four versions of the Cyberpunk board game. It'll be awesome if there was like expansion packs and it's just the same world, but progress the characters forward. But yeah, I, and I didn't know there was four different potential board games. I only thought there was one. So I don't actually know which one the PlayStation Access guys were playing. It could have been the one from 1990. I don't know. See, but yeah, this is where yeah. I've probably not done myself uh, any justice with this in terms of being at E3s and Gamescoms and had the potential to go see presentations and and uh, and so on, Mister Big Man. Hi, notice me. You are noticed. Welcome. Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't go in to see any of those presentations or anything. I just thought, okay, I don't want any sort of spoilers. And with that, I just kind of cut off like I do with most games because I don't want any. I want to just kind of go into it fresh. But in doing, I've clearly cut off a massive history because I mean. I knew it. I knew it took off, and I knew it got quite a lot of groundswell pretty quickly. But I didn't realize that that was. I thought that was based off of the fact that it's CD Projekt Red. It's the company that's just made The Witcher. We've got. They've got to the point of having world class TV series as well as video games, and Keanu Reeves is in it, and all the rest of the stuff. I didn't realize that it was founded on a, a thirty year history as well. So absolute noob central here. Hi, welcome. I had no idea. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, let's let's move forward. Let's move forward. Um, the trailer obviously is out there. If you didn't see it when I, when we played through it on screen, um, that probably didn't do it justice. Like I said, I watched it this yeah. morning and I found it almost an attack on the sensors, but I probably wasn't giving it my full attention either. So I will watch it again, uh, not on my phone screen as well, on a bigger screen uh, to try to take it all in. It does look amazing. It probably is one of those that even if you do t sit down and take it, all in at least from my perspective you probably need to watch it two or three times to really yeah. take in all of the individual elements and stuff because there's a lot going on in the game it's almost like it's almost like one of those pixar things where you where you where someone says did you see the fact that uh actually in in finding nemo there was a, a buzz lightyear toy or something like that it's like what <laughs> there's probably shit loads of that and it kind of gives me that sort of vibe maybe it won't but but the, not to that sort of yeah. hidden level, but there is a lot of detail going into it. So yeah, um, if you are starving of cyberpunk details, by the way, and you uh, anyone anyone wants any more and you want a deeper dive, then go into any news outlet, video game news outlet website today. You will find a breakdown of people's first five hours experience with the game. They'll give you all the information that you need. It was just there were so many of them, and they're so long that we literally couldn't feature this unless it was a four hour special on cyberpunk. The it, it is as a it's as you would expect from a review from a massive game, a AAA game. They're just extremely long. It'll give you a full breakdown and deep dive. It's just something that we can't do on here. We've give you a little bit of the breakdown of the trailer that we've seen. I think that will probably wet the wet, wet your appetite a little bit. If you want to know more, they just go into any of the news outlets: VG Twenty Four Seven, VGC, uh, Eurogamer, IGN, Kotaku, all of those big boys. Go to theirs. And if you want anything else, I'm sure they'll be in the smaller outlets as well. But I ask, Unfortunately, I haven't stumbled across them once yet. Um, but yeah, go and next feel free to go and... It's probably on next uh, did, did they? I was going to mention them, but I don't know if they've done a deep dive of it yet. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just giving them a shout out because they're good guys. Check out next gen base anyway. Don't just do it. Go on. <laughs> nice. um, uh, speaking of breakdowns, uh, as Bibby said, uh, a very, very tedious link into our next news article. Uh, breakdowns, as in, as in, you know, like, Breaking down like flaws and weaknesses and security risks and da -da 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 Sony are paying up to forty thousand three hundred pounds to anyone who reports PS4 security flaws. Told you it was a tedious link. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> written by Ethan Gash for Kotaku UK. Sony has rolled out a new bug bounty program yesterday that will pay out the fifty thousand dollars or forty thousand pounds, uh, forty thousand two hundred eighty-seven pounds to any hackers who help expose a major vulnerability in the PS4. Announced over on the PlayStation blog yesterday, the program is being run in partnership with HackerOne, which works with amateur hackers and security researchers to make companies aware of security flaws in their products. It's basically a trophy system for finding ways to break the PlayStation Network and PS4, except that there's real money involved. The bounty program pays anywhere from £100, uh, $100 to $3,000 for reporting issues with the PlayStation Network, 
and five hundred dollars to fifty thousand dollars for problems with the PS4. The big, uh, the bigger the flaw discovered, the higher the bounty. It's similar to the program Microsoft rolled out earlier this year for Xbox, as well as the one Nintendo has in place. According to Sony, it's been running a secret buy program for some time now, but decided to roll it out to the rest of the public because it recognizes the valuable role that the research community plays in enhancing security. PlayStation Network famously went down for 23 days straight after it was hacked back in 2011 by a big batch of massive penises. Sorry, I don't actually say that at the end. Sorry, it's just a full stop. Sorry, it didn't say anything about massive penises. Um, do you know what? I mean, obviously, it's, it's going to be a pretty brief story, this one. But I see, I, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. It's interesting to see that, obviously, Sony has been doing it behind closed doors uh, for a while. Um but having Microsoft come out and start using Hacker One to have an almost I mean what's the what's the phrase to say it? Can you, is it is it open source? Not open source, uh whatever, community driven um is it even community? I don't know. Uh well either way, they they open it out to the hacking community to say, look, okay, we have bounties and rewards in place for you to um Lol, great. <laughs> Are you laughing at the big penises? We're trying to God again. Oh, there we go. Uh, so throwing it out to the hacking community is amazing because you get people that may just do it as a hobby, and these could be people of veterans of 30 years of hacking, or they could just be like, as we mentioned when we spoke about the Microsoft thing last year, earlier this year, uh, mm. the George Hotz GeoHot who, who hacked like the PS3. Uh, he was just some 16-year-old, 17-year-old kid who just had a flair for coding and went at it in ways that the industry hadn't gone before. So this, I mean, from a from a security perspective, is is amazing because you can get if you put a reward on something, you uh, and, and a huge reward as well, fifty thousand dollars over forty thousand yeah. pounds. Um, then the amount of uh, effort that you will get from that, I mean, a lot a lot of hackers are. Uh, uh, not necessarily malicious thing. The hackers are security professionals that, that work yeah. in IT anyway. They have more money than they need because it's a, re- a really well paid job. So they do this as a bit of fun on the side anyway. So so they do it anyway. But offering fifty grand to and also to have the uh, the the uh, ability to say yeah I was the one that fixed the PS4 mate uh, is huge. It's nice to see that PlayStation are doing that. But are they doing this because Microsoft has done it? If they've had it behind closed doors for a while. Nintendo has been doing it for a while. If Nintendo are speaking out about, yeah, we we use um, a, a system of this, and Microsoft go, yeah, we do now too. Our son doing it now just because everyone else is doing it. Is it a case of keeping it with Joneses? Uh, Joneses? Joneses? I don't think so. I think that, uh, hypothetically speaking, the UI may look different on the PlayStation 5, but I think the back end and the security part in the in the back is going to be exactly the same. It just will have a fresh lick of paint. So if they find an exploits in it now, they could potentially find the Xbox exploits in it in the PlayStation 5. That's the way that I see it. I think it will the, the UIs will look completely different, but I think the back end of how secure everything is will be exactly the same. Um, are just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny little bit different. So if, if they're finding exploits in the PlayStation 4 uh, security systems now, I think that we're probably trying to show them up before the PlayStation 5 releases. I don't think they're going to change much. I'm not a tech guy, but it feels weird them rolling it all these security processes out now, six months away from bringing out a new console. Why would they not do that two years ago? Why would they not do that earlier in the year? Why would they not do that when the PlayStation 4 Pro was going to be coming out? It just feels weird that they're doing it now. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's, and in that sense, it's a case of why why haven't you done it before? Um, but, I mean, either way, it, the fact that they're getting all their proverbial, not even ducks in a row, their hacks in a row uh, before the next gen, I suppose, <laughs> it is a good thing. I mean, every new generation is is a new uh, layer of of... Uh, structure, I suppose. So you, it's building on top of everything that's that's happened before. Um, so yeah, like you say, you want to kind of box off that system because maybe I mean, God, this is completely guesswork from someone that knows nothing about coding. Either. Maybe building the uh, onto the PS5 sort of framework. If there is weaknesses in the PS4 and you move ahead, maybe maybe that essentially just gets. Uh, modulized and people go, yeah, the PS4 stuff was fine. Yeah. Um, and people don't realize that there may be an, a vulnerability there in the PS4 stuff that just gets buried under everything else that people can then mm. expose and utilize. 
playing fair. But they don't want a day one jailbreak on the PlayStation 5, do they? That's what they don't want. Uh, I, I don't think the PlayStation 3 still has... Uh, I don't think it's still being supported. So the security on that has probably well and truly gone now. Obviously, the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1, they've ceased a long, long time ago. But I don't know whether or not they're trying to put them in place now. So the support for PlayStation 4 may wean in like two or three years' time. Um, So they're trying to secure it now for forever. I don't know. Um, But it feels weird. I, I would assume that they're trying to put this in place now and getting the building blocks ready for the PlayStation 5. But that's just that's purely a guess and speculation. I agree. I agree. So don't worry, your PS4 will be secure. Uh, and if you've got a bit of spare time on your hands and you know code, and you can get yourself up to forty thousand pounds by uh, getting involved with PlayStation's Hacker One, well, Sony's Hacker One uh, setup. Fifty thousand dollar reward for anyone that provides substantial information on potential uh, PS4 security flaws. And speaking about PS5s. Uh, let's jump into our next bit of news. As Xbox boss feels that the Series X has a launch games and hardware advantage over the PS5. Uh, Phil Spencer says he felt good after seeing the PS5 reveal show. Interesting article written by Tom Ivan for VGC. Uh, before we jump into that, David says, I wonder why the business side of gaming are only just stating, uh, starting white hat hackers when every other field of e-commerce use them. Um, I think it's, it's maybe, the fact that gaming is is not just e-commerce. Gaming has a lot of its own development and hackers effectively anyway. So maybe they probably thought, well, we're so good. We do all this anyway. We know it all anyway. And they realize that actually there is a difference uh, between development for a system and then development to take down a system. Um, so maybe they've had all the skills that they needed that's lasted to a certain point, but yeah, realised. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, jumping in to this article, uh, Xbox head Phil Spencer uh, said he believes Xbox Series X has an advantage over PlayStation 5 when it comes to launch games and hardware. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so during the Game Lab live conference on Wednesday, Spencer was asked uh, for his reaction to the recent PS5 reveal event where Sony debuted next-gen software and unveiled the console design. I watched the show. I thought they did a good job, he responded, adding that he sent Sony Interactive Entertainment President Jim Ryle a note of congratulations for PlayStation's production efforts on the event. As a competitor, it's great to have them out there now, so we kind of know what the program is. We see the device, we see the games, he continued. Just being honest, I felt good after seeing their show. I think the hardware advantages that we have built are going to show up as we are taking more, uh, we are talking more about our games and frame rates and other things. I thought the games lineup uh, that we're going to have at launch, I felt really good about that. And uh, we got more clarity on what they're doing at their show, which just helped us focus in on more of what we have. And I think that will be a great strength for us at launch. So I thought they did a good job. I thought they do what they do very well. And they did that. But when I think about the position that we're in with the games that we're going to be able to show and how they're going to show up and the hardware advantage that we have, I think we are in a very good position. Ahead of an Xbox Series X first party game showcase in July, Spencer reiterated that Microsoft has taken on board criticism of its first next-gen uh, software reveal event in May, which focused on third-party titles and left some viewers underwhelmed. So I feel good about July and the gameplay that we're going to be showing there and the hardware capability, he said. Teams are working hard to get it lined up. We've taken feedback from our last event, and I think people are really going to be pleased with what we're going to be showing there. Halo will be a big part of it, and I think that's obviously uh, an important title for us, obviously, Halo Infinite. Uh, 343 Industries released a Halo Infinite video teaser on Wednesday, and the game is described as a spiritual reboot of Xbox flagship shooter series, which launched in 2001. Spencer also said on Wednesday that Microsoft's Xbox uh, all-access console sub- subscription model will be critical to the Xbox Series X launch and the overall hardware generation. Interesting. Bib. What's your mm. thoughts? What's your thoughts? I think he's talking a very good game here, but it's something that you would expect from someone who is going to spearhead this new console into a new generation. These these seem to be the very same words that he was saying two months ago. And then from, from my perspective and uh, from your perspective as well, we both said that uh, we really enjoyed that uh, Xbox event in May. There was a lot of games in there we're both interested in, but they seemed like the rest of the world. I think that's because we're not 
pledging allegiance to either side. We're very down the middle. We're open to be playing on both consoles. It's just PlayStation is our primary console due to you're playing PUBG on it daily. That's and that's where my friends play. I play Pro. Uh, I play uh, PES 10 v10 on there. That is literally the only reason that I turn my PlayStation on nowadays. But um, it's these are very big words. They need to be backed up because they fell flat last time in some people's eyes. I thought it was a good conference. There was a lot of games in there that I wanted to play. So he's never going to come out <clears throat> and say, yeah, I think we might be second best this time round. He's always going to be wanting to try and one up PlayStation. And that's his job. He's never going to, you know what I mean? He's never going to, he's never going to have a flat announcement. He can't afford to do that. He's got a lot of pe- he's got a lot of people's not jobs, but he's got a lot of people's reputations on the line with these consoles coming out. So, <clears throat> in my perspective, he, he, these are all hype words. People will either love or hate the conference. There's never really an in between. They're satisfied, but that kind of again, that's a fall flat thing. You either love it or you hate it. Yeah, I it's, think it's, it's almost like you have to love it. If you don't love it, you hate it. It's kind of like that. If you're in the middle. Then you might as well hate it because it's something new and it's something shiny. And if you don't love it, then 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 it's it's not good enough. It's almost kind of there's almost that sort of angle to it. We thought it was really good because there was so much content and so on. Other people thought, yeah, there was content and stuff. It doesn't resonate with me. Therefore, it was shit. There is no yeah. there is no almost. There's a very fine middle ground, but most of it is really like it or it was crap. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely why we've got the little bit of hate element to it. Um, it, 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 these are fighting words that he's saying. Like he's he's going on about the PlayStation conference, saying yeah that it was very good. They do what they do very well. Um, but I think we're in a better position. We've got better hardware, and we've potentially got an IP that people are really looking forward to. I mean, Halo is the IP that everyone looks forward to, and immediately when you think of Microsoft or the Xbox, but my mind immediately goes to Halo uh, rather than like the likes of Gears of War or Forza. Uh, my affinity with Halo is more so than the likes of uh, Forza and Gears of War. So I am interested to see what Halo will look like, but you've got, they've got to do better on the uh, on the first party games. It's, it's, it's a stick that they've been beaten with for such a long time now, but they need to do better with that stuff. It doesn't matter how powerful your console is, mate. The third party games, that's, that's great. That's kind of like your bread and butter because the developers are going to create it for both consoles, but... You need to do better with them first party games, mate. That's what people are going to try and judge you on. And that's what the PlayStation has been judged on the last two generations. 100%. 100%. Just want to mention that Madge says that on screen headline. Uh, yes, we didn't have characters. So I used an abbreviation that I've seen before that, that made me chuckle. Xbox <laughs> Series X is a capital S with a lowercase e, a C, and then just into a capital X. So six has an advantage over the P- uh, PS5. Um, Obviously, the full uh, tagline there was the uh, Series X has a launch games and hardware advantage over the PS5, according to Phil Spencer. But sex has an advantage. There you go. That's the way for it now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's natural that Phil Spencer is going to come out and say all that stuff. Like you say, he is on uh, the front line delivering some marketing content. Yes, it was um, uh, the Game Lab. Uh, was it? Yeah, Game Lab Live conference. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a Microsoft keynote speech, but he also says, uh, he said previously that every every time they're in these sort of things, he can't just say something that he feels might be the case, or he can't be real some of the time because people will subtweet it, subquote it, change the meaning of what his actual wording is, uh, and post messages out of context to change it all. So yeah, whenever he's in any of these. You can't really just take it as oh well he was he wasn't speaking on behalf of Xbox in a conference he was speaking his own belief that might be the case but also his own belief will always be on behalf of Microsoft and Xbox like he's in the conference because he knows that everything he says uh, uh, just join see the discussing now yeah, uh, yeah. um well in chapters Series X by the way uh, just an avatar in space sex does have the advantage over the PS5 well you never know <laughs> you never know um. But yeah, as they said before, every time he speaks now, he has to be aware of PR. Uh, that people can't just come out and be open and honest. Once you, particularly when bigger companies do it, they have to be aware. They can't just say something off the cuff. They can't just say uh, flippant remarks. They can't say what they would like to see in a game because if they say what they would like to see and then it doesn't appear, then people are going to twist that and say, "You said you'd like to see this." 
and it's not even in the game. So naturally, you don't like the game. So why should we like the game? And it's just kind of like, mm. it's that sensationalist sort of dehumanizing, uh, uh, ultra humanizing uh, comments and taking it to, yeah. So, so all of this, whilst not being an Xbox statement, it's a Phil Spencer statement, it's full on an Xbox statement. We, we, we believe in our hardware. We believe it's better, bigger, faster, stronger, and other words in the Daft Punk songs. Um, <laughs> I was just about to start singing it. They're well played. Uh, so, um, it sounds very, very, uh, like he doesn't need to be an article. It sounds like what you'd expect to say. Uh, but me and Bib have just been sat uh, telling you uh, how um, The Scoop is the UK's number one video game podcast. That's us selling our messaging kind of thing. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. And and are we, in terms of boys listen to and so on, are we the number one video game podcast? No. But us saying our message means it's true to us. doesn't necessarily mean it's true out there. So Phil's saying that they say he's happy with what they've got in terms of hardware and software and so on. Great, that's wonderful. But didn't he also say that they don't have any PS no uh, series X exclusives at launch? So now why is he so happy with the games that they've got coming and so on? Uh which yeah, it's it's all smoke and mirrors. I mean the fact that he is saying that is good because it shows that they're going, Okay, well we are happy with what we have. Um doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna blow anything away and, and take the industry, take the market or whatever. Uh but it does show that he um it, it, it believes in his product enough uh, to think that they're going to be at, at least as successful as they had the last generation, which is good, which is good. I think that's all we can read into it. Beyond that, it's kind of hard to stick it anyway. Uh, Matt says, I heard people say the opposite things in criticism of the conference. PS5 didn't show third party enough. Microsoft didn't show enough in-house games. I mean, th that's just... Did you just time out Carson? Yes. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Oh dear, Carson, I apologise. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't because of Ali, Ali. Uh, but yeah, uh, honestly, he's a mod. <laughs> he just banned a mod. <laughs> uh, Seventy-seven seconds. Think about what you're going to say next time you come back in here, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, yeah, we are mature here on Twitch or TV for slash. <laughs> Uh, spe speaking of maturity, I, I, I do want to jump into some more immaturity as well. Um, let me bring this back on screen. Xbox boss feels Series X as a blah, 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 blah. They're talking about this game lab live conference. Uh, and this is where you should take these conferences with a little bit of a pinch. Talking about how he's just giving uh, his own messaging from his own standpoint. And it's kind of always going to be uh, pro his brand, it has to be, he can't say anything negative because he'll just get slated internally. Share prices will fall. His only community will turn his back on him and everything. But this isn't uh, something that has been briefed and, and tested and, and run through and so on. He's literally just saying off the cuff that this is an Xbox. Uh, Xbox is good. Uh, oh, you, you looked at Carson, his, his mod uh, sword now because you, you timed him out. You've got to give him that back now. <laughs> oh, dear. Is that yeah, how yeah. it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Yep. No problems. Um, but yeah, jump, go, jumping back into this, uh, this if there's one thing that shows you that this isn't something that you can take as an official announcement as their signal of intent to to show that they are better, is there? Look at this, this article. Hopefully, you can see my case. There you go. It's on the screen. What does that say? It says Phil Spen Sir. Okay, there we go. And what does this say? Phil Spen Sir. So this announcement that, that's being covered as if it's like gospel news. What do they call him in this? Phil Spen Sir with an S. So clearly it's not that big a deal to the point where this has been fully briefed and, and gone over and so on. It's it's I mean not I mean, I have sex on the screen for Series X because we don't have character space. It's it's I think take it as gospel as you are taking our word. Don't don't i I'm not I'm not writing it down. Uh, typos happen, fair enough, job's good. <clears throat> but but um what I'm saying is he was just answering some questions and saying his he believes in his products. Mm. So, yeah, job's good. Is it better than the uh, PS5? Well, we'll tell you that in the whole day 2020 when we start to see stuff come out. Maybe a year afterwards. <laughs> but now it's just it's just lip service. We all know that. Um, uh, I will be sending you some pictures of the Guard of Honor for that bit. <laughs> uh, well, the CPU is a bit faster and Sony launch games are not nothing special. So, And never, never in the Xbox ones. Uh, but that's kind of the thing. There's nothing... 
it's numbers. You're comparing numbers to numbers. The the, the Xbox uh, One X has better numbers than the PS4 Pro, but which one is the most successful one? And that's the point. Mm-hmm. Numbers is numbers is numbers. Having better hardware is wonderful. PlayStation's SSD is an absolute beast in, in reality, according to everyone that has more technical knowledge than I do, saying, yeah, SSDs are good, but PlayStation's SSD is special. I don't know what that means. I'm taking people's word for it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, saying the, the Sony's games are, are nothing special, I think... Um, I think I think they're decent enough. I mean, we've got a new Horizon coming. We've got some more content from the world of Spider-Man. I mean, those two on their own are game of the year sort of titles. So, I, I mean, I would say we have you, more. You, uh, on, on that game of the year thing, very quickly, do you think mm-hmm. that the, the Spider-Man game, with it being, uh, I hate saying this word, a budget game, because it's an in-between one, it's not going to be full price. Do you reckon that has a contention to be game of the year? Uh, probably not, but I didn't necessarily mean that these were going to be Game of the Years. I meant they come from Game of the Year, what's the word? Heritage. So, um, so yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn's, uh, you can understand if a lot of people have that Game of the Year. Uh, Spider-Man, you can understand if a lot of people have that Game of the Year. Um, so the next in the series of those, that that's some big games to start with. Yes, Spider-Man's only a 1.5, uh, but it's still more content with all of the next-gen bells and whistles. I mean, a lot of people liked the idea of The Last of Us on the PS4. Last of Us Remastered, amazing! That's essentially what Spider-Man is. There's nothing wrong with having uh, the Lost Legacy from Uncharted as well as being Uncharted Remastered, uh, and that's kind of what it is. So, I'm, so I'm, um, yeah, I'm happy enough with that. So at, at this point in time, I would say PlayStation probably does have the better uh, games roster. However, Xbox hasn't showed their exclusives yet and that's what we get next month at that point in time that's when we can start to see it and that's where we get to see if phil spencer is really happy or if he's just marketingly happy uh mm-hmm. and at that point we'll see um he's hoping sex sells <laughs> yes we we all are we all are uh, get get a bit of sex everywhere i mean in the series x because obviously it makes the ps5 more competitive. That's what I'm on about. Honestly, it's God. Uh, anyway, Shagged next. Yes, yes. <laughs> next bit of news, sticking with Xbox, and it's a very brief bit of news, so we'll fly through this one, is in terms of, there we go, the Xbox Games with Gold of July are Saints Row 2, uh, WRC 8, uh, the is that all one word? All one game? WSR, uh, WRC 8 FIA World Rally Championship more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so basically, rally game. There we go. Uh, so Xbox Games with Gold for July have been announced for Xbox One and Xbox 360. July's ga- Xbox Games with Gold have been announced, and the games are WRC8 FIA World Rally Championship, Dunk Lords, Saints Row 2, and Juju. Uh, <laughs> hello. Notice me. <laughs> Don't worry, you've been noticed, baby. It's fine. Uh, uh, WRC8 FIA World Rally Championship will be available for Xbox One. July the 1st to the 30th. Dunk Lords will arrive in July the 16th and will be available until August the 15th for Xbox One. Xbox One and Xbox 360 users will be able to grab Saints Row 2 on July the 1st and it will be replaced by Juju on July the 16th. You still have time to download and play Coffee Talk until July the 15th on Xbox One. And there's also Cinemore for both consoles and Shantae the Pirate's Curse for Xbox One until June the 30th. Uh... Yep, all one title. Yeah, bizarre. That's the longest time. I mean, I mean, WRC eight is already long enough because is, is that a World Rally Cross or whatever it is, or World Rally Championships or something like that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you're reading that. It actually has WRC and World Rally Championship in the same title. It just sounds bizarre. So, World Rally Championship eight, FIA World Rally Championship, <laughs> and then FIA is an abbreviation. Look at this dunk lord. Is that a basketball game? Sounds like a basketball game. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as I seen Dunk Lords, I thought, yeah, it has to be. Uh, and it looks very much like a B Tech NBA Jam. Okay, it's, I'm it's... just seeing whether or not it looks. It looks like it's got like a little mini career mode with like, is this voice acted? No, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it's been voice acted. It's just like Frank pops up on the screen and then like text underneath. It's Super Soccer yeah. Blast meets Overwatch meets Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> what a game. Uh, yeah, Dunk Lords, it, it looks, yeah. 
<laughs> it's, I'm glad it's free, put it that way. I can't see it being free. I can't see it being free. Uh, but there you go. Free games, if you're on Xbox, make sure you get them. Um, they are, let me go back through it again. Uh, uh, the WRCA FIA World Rally Championship, Dunk Lords, Saints Row 2, and Juju. They're the July games. Um, whereas you can still get Coffee Talk, uh, Cinemora, and Shante and the Pirates Curse until June the 30th. So you've got four more days to get those before the new games come in. If you are an Xbox One uh, games with, well, is it Xbox Gold? Like, uh, is that what you need to get games with Gold? It must be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, if, you, if you're an Xbox Gold user, make sure you get your free games if you want them. Um, I do find that, do you know, it's interesting. I do find Xbox's thing a little bit more tedious than than PS Plus. Um, but because in terms of, I, I, I know it's exactly the same thing. Xbox, basically, rather than having July, 1st of July till the 30th of July or whatever, you get these games. Uh, they have it for, like, the first 15 days, and then they swap out with other ones and so on. It basically means you have half the time to get them, but they have more games in there. I just find it more yeah. tedious because I'm like, out of those, I'm not probably not going to play Dunk Lords. I don't even know what Juju is. And I'm probably not going to play WRC 8 FIA World Cup Championship. Saints Row 2, I probably would, but now I only have, like, quarter of the time uh, half of the time that I would use them to get the game. And I need to remember to log in and get them every 15 days. Basically, I'm a spoiled little biatch that just doesn't want to log in every 15 days to get the games, is what I'm saying. Um, but, you know, even still, I mean, whether it's spoiled or not, the fact that there's four games in there is still a good offer for uh, for uh, freebies. There you go. Go get it. Speaking of more freebies, let's jump into our final bit of news so we can wrap things up just around an hour so we can get prepped for the next episode. Of Masters of the League, we know that's what you're all here for. We know, we know. it's fine. Um, yeah, uh, Bimp's doing his hello, <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> uh, so this final bit of news more freebies for PC players this time, though. Written by Andy Chalk for PC Games, Stranger Things 3 and Air Memories of Old are free on the Epic Games store. Uh, get them while they're hot and free. Uh, a fresh new Thursday is upon us, uh, and that means it's obviously yesterday, and that means a fresh new selection of games that are free for the taking from the Epic Games Store. Today brings us Air Memories of Old, a beautiful adventure about transforming into a bird and exploring a strange ancient realm of floating islands, and Stranger Things 3, the game, the official companion game to the show that somehow turned David Harbour into a sex symbol. Stranger Things 3 is a retro-style action-adventure that promises familiar events from the series, as well as all new characters, quests, and sequels. Uh, players can do a uh, battle against the emerging evils of the Upside Down, as one of 12 characters from the show and two player call, uh, co-op is also spotted. I couldn't know that bit, actually. In Air, Memories of Old, you become a shape-shifting girl named Orc on a pilgrimage to the Land of the Gods. It's been around for a few years now, but it's quite good. We called it a beautiful game with great playing, only held back by confusing interiors and a short duration in our 2017 review. Of course, the big selling point for both uh, right now is that they're free for the taking until July the 2nd. After that, the survival MMO Conan Exiles and the Water Cooler Puzzle Adventure Q will take their place. For more freebies, keep your eyes on our run list of all the free games you can grab right now. So freebies! Freebies! Everyone loves a good freebies! Free um, so yeah, Stranger Things 3... Ooh, did I just lose it and bring it back there we go uh, Stranger Things 3 uh, is available right now as is Air Members of Old for those of you that ha are Twitch Prime users you may already have Stranger Things 3 uh, already that is pretty much the main reason that I have the Twitch uh, launcher slash desktop app installed on my piece to download, uh, download Stranger Things 3 which I did ages ago but it's now free on Epic so if you didn't pick it up on Twitch then then you can get it on Epic do you have it already babe? oh the on I do <laughs> I do have a, I do have Stranger Things, Stranger Things free, mate. Uh, Stranger Things. Twitch. Well, I, I, I don't have the Twitch launcher on my PC anymore because it seems to run it to the ground. It's as soon as it boots up, it just brings everything to its knees. So, yeah, I don't have that anymore, but it is there. Am I going to get it for Epic Games? Obviously, because I like to bulk up my my catalog on whatever platform. Just looking at the uh, the uh, emotes from chappers in the chat. Game a moment. I just farted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need an I just fired him up for when Bib suddenly leans to the side. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Uh, someone, someone does a favor. Go look through our previous clips and search for one called Donald Trump. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, competitive biscuit tea dunking game, Bibby. Oh, yes, please. Uh, I love that. 
I mean, I'm I'm running low on my resources, but I'm I'm involved in this. Look at that, Graham's biscuits. Yeah, chocolate digestives in there, bad boy. Not many left now, but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, although I did go to Tesco the other day, um, I, and I'm the kind of person that doesn't like multiple flavors of biscuit in one jar because flavors transfer from one to the other one. And the worst thing you could ever do in the world is have uh, is have like a shitload of digestive biscuits or some plain biscuits and then have, say, like a Viscount or a, or an orange-flavoured biscuit. Anything mint or, or orange in a biscuit jar just paints everything else. Anyway, long story short, I've got a shitload of digestives there. I went to Tesco the other day and I came back with like four packs of biscuits. I've got some chocolate hobnobs, world-class, and uh, chocolate digestives. There you go. That's the biscuit update. Anyone want to add to, to your biscuit? No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Exactly. Paid DLC includes biscuit packs from McVitie's and Max and Spencer. Oof. Oof, yes, please. Or, or even just just standard Tesco finest. Those they're not not always from Tesco. You can get them from from coffee shops and from um, Costco and things like that. But those square shortbread with chocolate chunks in the chocolate chip short uh, chocolate chunk shortbread is fit. Uh, there you go. Um, uh, sup, labs, uh, labs, labs, lads, guys, good morning. Uh, Bibby, you want to join me, social distance still, of course, and drinking alcoholic beverages until the new prem season starts again? I mean, I have a fridge of alcohol just, just there, so I can, I can get involved. Let's get that <laughs> dead too. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Uh, Firefly, good morning. Uh, beautiful gentleman over there. Um, I don't care for the game, for for the show. Uh, strange things. See, I, I kind of, I, I'm kind of that with most things. Actually, I've got a question. Can anyone hear that? The beeping, reversing sort of like car outside. I cannot. Yes, RTX voice, you absolute hero. Usually I'd be sat there and you'd all be like, <laughs> beep. <laughs> but yes, nice. Um, yeah, I, I'm usually any sort of TV or movie spin offs, I'm usually like, ah, get in the bin. It's, it's going to be crap. It's literally just there for a cash in. I mean, some of, the, some of my favourite films, because I'm a massive man-child, are the Transformers films, the, the earlier ones. Um, and I remember like, ooh, Transformers video games. And um, I think it was actually Next Gen Base uh, uh, did a competition or, get, uh, or, or gave one away. I can't remember what it was. I ended up with a copy of Transformers on the PS3, maybe. And it was pants. It was not very good whatsoever. Uh, and I've kind of been that ever since... Um, Video games have just kind of uh, video games from TVs and movie spin-offs have just kind of not had my attention. But this Str Stranger Things one because they didn't just try to replicate it uh, in some sort of crappy over the shoulder third person sort of thing, and they went they leaned into that retro style. It, it looks pretty good. It does look pretty good. Um, Jenkins. Now then, now then. Good day, Mine Jenkins. Uh, did you get some Tesco caramel ice cream cream? I didn't. I didn't. We do have. Um, do you know? What? On paper, it's not an ice cream that I would ever choose because I'm never fruit. I'm always chocolate, cream, and dirtiness. But we have uh, haagen mango, and raspberry, which sounds horrible to me. Uh, but it's one of the most nicest, refreshing ice creams you've ever tried. There's a pro tip. mango and uh, haagen mango, and raspberry. mango and mango, and raspberry. There you go. Macadamia caramel cookie ice cream from Lidl. Get in. Uh, I don't think we get that. Uh... Aren't they releasing some Transformers BR? I hope not. Uh, Jenkins says, all the Transformers PC games were, well, not good, but fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Most most tie-in stuff usually is a bit fancy like that. Uh, Rise says, then it's settled. It's a date. A club wins the Prem once in 30 years, and all of a sudden they're invincible. I'm not salty. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Carson's got he's wielding that uh, that sword he's ready he's primed <laughs> for people to start giving more shit out uh, we'll give him this one they've, they've absolutely dominated the league they've romped it they've deserved this one yeah fuckers I mean uh, anyway, uh, Transformers Devastation was quality on PS4 uh, says man I never, never, never played that one I played that one I, I think I'd probably been uh, turned off by the last few so I'd just kind of given up on Transformers games by that point in time but anyway Speaking about giving up, we'll wrap things up here. We're going to go off because it is time for Friday's episode of Masters of the League. Let's fucking go! Yes! Uh, so for those of you who didn't see, we didn't have Wednesday's episode because of Twitch Blackout. On Monday, we did some stupid, stupid but, but amazing business in the market. We got rid of our uh, our best player in Holstenberg, but we brought in Alfonso Davis. We brought in Kubo. We brought in... Uh, was it Matt Faith, Safanoff, Miles Fila? So we've got double keepers. We've got some defenders. 
So long story short, we have a brand new and exciting team. We've got pace, we've got flair, we've got attacking talent potentially. Oh, is it going to be enough for the Premiership? Well, you can find out in about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to go off, we're going to get everything reset, green screened up, and we're going to come back at... I don't know what, what we're looking for. We're going to come back to Pret and Reddit. There we go. 12 latest, so yeah. Uh, we're going to come back. Make sure you're here for 12. Stick around in the chat if you want. If not, you'll get the, the notifier. Or you should get the notifier when we, when we go live. But we will be live with the next episode of Masters of the League. We don't really have much money left, so we're going to fly through the rest of the transfer window. And we may even have some football to be played today. Who knows? Who knows? But the only way you can find out is to stick around. Um, other than that, that's it for the week. Uh, apart from maybe additional ad hoc content that goes out over the weekend, that is it. But we obviously will be back on Monday with more content. The, the best way to be notified, though, is if you are new here, to hit the follow button. That will give you a notifier every time you go live. There could be additional broadcasts over the weekend, and that's how you will find out. Uh, but there's anything you want to add, babe? Yeah, well, thank you very much uh, for joining us this week, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a hell of a loop. We've had a lot of news. We've had a lot of gameplay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... As always, if you do see any news knocking around over the weekend that you want to let us know your thoughts about, then do feel free to get in contact with us. Yes, the chatbot is working. Thank you very much, uh, Dave, for letting us know earlier. Um, just drop in. At, we've got a binio at Ice Cream Uploads, at Graham underscore Dave, with your thoughts and opinions. If you want to drop it into Discord, it is there available for you. Also on that, uh, if you are here for Masters of the League, I love you guys, um, but I have been updating the Masters of the League mods the ones that we use, we have got a lot more, but I just can't find all the links with the stuff because once they're gone, they're, they're kind of gone kind of thing. Um, so I have dropped in all the stuff that we use into Discord. So feel free to go in and take some of that stuff. If you like how ours looks, you can use that yourselves, but that's just a nice, nice little cram bit of information in there for you. Uh, but yeah, we're back on Monday, um, starting the working week off with the scoop. Um, again, just one more thing. I know I'm rabbiting on here. But if you <laughs> click the logo, if you're on your desktop or you're on the mobile, click our logo, you'll see a little area there called schedule that gets updated at 12 a.m. on for, well, it's Sunday slash Monday, uh, with what our working week is going to be in terms of streams that are going to be coming your way. So, uh, yeah, you'll see 10 a.m. the scoop ish, uh, and then Masters of the League Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, but I've just kind of ruined that little tie in there. But Graham, <laughs> what time will we be going live on Monday? 10 a.m. ish. <laughs> I don't know. You said it before. <laughs> I know. I'm just going through all the schedule stuff. That schedule feature, if you're not using it and you are a streamer, please use it. It, it is, is amazing. It is. It's good. It's good. Uh, comment uh, teeing up Master League from, uh, from Rizal says, being the top, top scout, uh, I'm now expecting after all the signings that we brought in, at least getting Europa League. If not, I may have to look into other clubs offering me positions at their club. Well, we'll evaluate your contract in January then, mate. <laughs> Can't make any promises. We promised a top 13 finish, um, and that's where our promises have stayed. Um, however, we was aiming for playoffs in the last season, and we ended up winning the league, so who knows? I mean, all I want to say is the board did, the board did push uh, for us getting like something like, what was it, top six all they wanted us. And we were like, yeah. count, count the fuck down. And they were like, okay, well, we think that's a bit shit, but whatever. It's like, we've just been promoting me. Uh, so clearly Rise has been having a chat with the board. But anyway, if you want to see how those conversations go, if you want to see if we can get promoted or whatever, sticking around for Master League is how you will do that. We are going to drop off now. As we say, if you're watching this on demand on YouTube or you're listening uh, on the audio podcast services, then the video content will be out already. You can watch it on YouTube or just watch the broadcasts back on Twitch. But if you are here live on Twitch right now, then just stick around. We're going to be back within 15 minutes max, something like that. So yeah. Have yourselves a fantastic day, ladies and gentlemen. And has Magic Man has said in the chat. And now, I stream applause. And now, Fat Man Dave. Have yourselves a fantastic day. And remember, stay frosty.